So this is what I get for ordering a random slab online from a complete stranger. This slab is a mess and I wasn't even sure if I should use it for this project. It showed up broken and half rotted and I thought there was no way I could make something interesting out of this. But then I decided to challenge myself and turn this garbage into something beautiful and something that I think I can actually sell for around $5,000. Listen guys, I've got a daughter in college and that education isn't cheap, so I need to make this happen. So let's dive right in. This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. So this is a maple burl slab I got from Oregon. It's a cookie slab, which means it's a slab that's cut perpendicular to the trunk of the tree. I ordered this slab online. It was a little over $300 and it showed up looking like a second grader packed it with some loose cardboard and a bunch of duct tape. I'm actually lucky it was only broken in one spot. This cookie slab also has a large hollow void in the middle and that's perfect for what I do best, pour epoxy all over everything. Like I said, this portion has some pretty brittle and rotten sections, and you've seen me cleaning those up with this sander called a Restore. I'm gonna make sure I link this and all the other items I use on this build down below. So here in Oklahoma, we get a couple days of nice spring weather, and that's followed by a month of wondering if your house is just gonna get blown away in a tornado, followed by suddenly being in the middle of summer where it's in the upper 90s and so humid, your eyeballs sweat. So I'm retreating to the only air conditioned space in my shop, the office slash storage room where I've got the temp set to a comfortable 70 degrees, which is absolutely ideal for pouring epoxy. I also moved my epoxy workbench back into the storage room and the top of this is made from some UHMW plastic. I've got a whole video on how I did that, but I can pour the epoxy right on top and just peel it off when it cures. Make sure you go check out that video as well, but only after you finish watching this one. And then maybe you go watch a couple of my other videos and definitely hit that like button, maybe get subscribed. We'll become close personal friends and then we'll exchange Christmas gifts every year. Okay, moving on. That broken section doesn't quite fit up with the rest of the cookie because wood expands and contracts based on environmental factors. And these two pieces were moving independently of one another after it broke. So this means I can't just glue it back together Together and it be seamless. There's no way to hide the crack on this one. That crack is just too big and that leaves us with one option. Celebrate the crack. I'm gonna use some Total Boat 2 to 1 high performance epoxy and I'm adding a small amount of black pigment in order to get a smoky black translucent effect where you're gonna be able to see the burl uh, nubbins, I guess, down through the epoxy. I don't know what they're I'm pouring this first layer of epoxy on the outer border, and I'm also pouring it in the center, even though later on I'm planning on using a swirled green epoxy in the center. And my idea doing this is to fuse that broken piece with the entire cookie slab, and then also to seal up the bottom of the form. So once I start pouring that green epoxy, it can't flow underneath the cookie slab and mix with that smoky black. That was my plan at least. I ended up taking a hard left turn on this project, and I'm actually really happy I did so, but more on that and why here in a bit. For now, I've got two layers of that smoky black high performance epoxy poured, and I can do these pours a quarter inch at a time. Also, Total Boat is a longtime sponsor of this channel. I'll make sure to have links for all those Total Boat products that I use on this video down in the description, as well as a discount code for 10% off at totalboat.com. Okay, let's switch gears and jump into building the base of this coffee table. I'm gonna carve this on the CNC from some Baltic birch plywood. So a little history on this stuff. Two years ago, Baltic Birch cost 55 bucks a sheet. Now they cut me a deal for 120 bucks for a four by eight sheet. Now it's pretty bad when I have to choose between either buying a sheet of plywood or my daughter's tuition. While I'm carving the coffee table base, let's jump into the design and talk about that real quick. I got into SketchUp and drew up this piece to have a curved symmetrical style and the whole thing's gonna slot together using some half lap joints and it's got sort of a parametric look to it. My plan is to then paint the sides black and then leave the exposed plies on the edges a natural color. And this is gonna be highly visible and create a high contrast from the rib structure that looks like, honestly, I have no idea what you would call this style, but it's pretty cool, right? 
an interesting design. I'm the one who made the design, so there's no way I would hate my own design. And let's cut to me explaining why I hate this design. I don't like it at all. This was something that in the design phase I thought was really cool. Seeing it in person, it's not what I was going for. You know, the idea is to take something that was broken and almost not even worth saving and turn it into something that is very elegant and nice and commands that high commission, that high price. This misses that mark. But I think it's time to completely rethink the design of the base. And as a matter of fact, I started thinking about my original idea for the top of the coffee table. Table. I was gonna do a uh, green kind of funky swirl in the middle. Honestly, I don't think that's the move anymore. I think I'm gonna go with a more elegant piece, a higher end piece using higher end material. I'm gonna draw up this table base design that I kind of have in mind. And I'm gonna run to the lumber store and get some walnut. So we're gonna set this aside and totally rethink everything. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, if you're keeping track at home, add another $357 in material cost in the walnut that I had to go buy. And I'm also gonna use roughly $1,000 of epoxy in this piece. So if I'm gonna sell this and generate any sort of profit, I really need to focus on making a higher end piece using quality materials, and then do it in a way that appeals to someone who can redirect four to five grand from their, I don't know, their yacht maintenance budget or whatever rich people spend money on. Now. Again, given the high cost materials and the limited supply that I had on hand, it was imperative that I be careful with this and not mess anything up. So immediately, I was careless and totally messed it up. When I was creating the tool pass, I made an error and set up those tool pass for a quarter inch bit, but I'm actually using a half inch bit to cut everything. Thankfully, I was monitoring all the carves and I quickly caught this. So I was able to switch to carving those angled leg pieces on what was left over from that board that I messed up. And then the remainder of those carves went pretty smooth. Okay, jumping back to the cookie slab and I took it out of the epoxy mold. But I wanted to take a second to talk about something far more important than any of this other stuff. Okay, I'm gonna share something with you guys that I've never talked before on this channel. And that's the fact that personally, I've dealt with anxiety and depression. Several times in my life have sought out therapy. It's hard to carve out time in my day to actually go to a therapist. And if you're in a similar situation, today's sponsor, BetterHelp, is here to help you. Talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your convenience. And it's really easy to get started. You just fill out a questionnaire to assess your specific needs and then get matched with the therapist in under 48 hours. From there, you can schedule secure video or phone sessions. Plus, you can exchange unlimited messages and you can request a new therapist at no additional charge at any time. Join the 2 million people that have already taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Get matched with a therapist today that will listen and help you. And to get 10% off your first month, click on that link down in the description below and go to betterhelp.com slash Johnny Builds. That's betterhelp.com slash Johnny Builds. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the broken slab and how I plan on celebrating the crack. Given that I'm using epoxy to completely envelop this cookie slab, putting bow tie inlays is not structurally necessary. However, aesthetically speaking, you're gonna see a large crack on one side and then a smaller crack on the other side of the broken piece. To visually put the slab together, and I'm using air quotes here, visually I'm gonna stitch together the broken edges with some bow tie inlays. Now, in the past, you've seen me do bow ties on the CNC, but for the best, most consistent results that I've gotten, I really like using this Rockler bow tie inlay router template. Now, there's a collar for the router that screws onto the router base, and this essentially helps you color between the lines while you're cutting out these bow ties. I cut three of the large bow ties along the larger crack, and then three of the smaller bow ties along the smaller crack. To cut the inlays themselves, I remove that spacer from the collar and then run the router along the edge of the template.
and in about 20 minutes, I had all six bow ties cut and then three inlays for the larger bow ties. And honestly, I can't recommend this Rockler bow tie jig enough. Rockler is another longtime sponsor of my channel, and I've got links for this and all the Rockler products that I use down in the video description. We had a cold front move through and now I can be back in the shop and I have to rebuild and recock the epoxy form around the slab and then finish the epoxy pours. One thing I feel like needs to be pointed out, pouring epoxy, it's kind of sexy. Oh yeah, girl. You know what time it is. It's time to pour some epoxy. I'm gonna pour some epoxy all over you. I know you could watch that all night and feel free to rewind that and watch that bit as many times as you need, but I gotta get this project done. Just a few more layers and I ended up with a grand total of almost nine gallons of epoxy in this piece. I let everything cure overnight and then put it on the CNC to flatten and then cut in the final profile of the tabletop. I sanded the tabletop to get rid of all the cut lines left over from flattening and then cleaned it all up with a wet rag. And when I do that, you can really see how this cookie slab is gonna pop inside that epoxy. Last for the top, I'm gonna hit it with a few flood coats of clear high performance epoxy. And this is gonna seal everything and leave a nice glossy finish. And it's really gonna make that maple burl cookie slab stand out and allow you to see through the translucent smoky epoxy about a half inch. And that really gives it sort of this kind of ghostly fading off into the abyss look. Getting back to the walnut base, I can sand down all those parts and prepare for final assembly. I added domino mortises to all the pieces and then glued up the two individual sides of this base. All that's left now is to assemble that base and the stretchers slot into the mortises. It's all friction fit and there's no glue necessary for this all to stay together. I finished the table base with some Odie's oil and Odie's looks so good on walnut. It's my favorite finish, but on walnut, it just looks amazing. Next up, I attach the base to the tabletop with some figure eight fasteners. And with that, this table was done. All right, guys, I'm gonna list this table on eBay for 5,000 bucks. I'm pretty confident that I can find a buyer at that price point, but we'll see, I might be wrong. What do you guys think is gonna happen? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you wanna follow along, I'm gonna have a link down below for that eBay listing. And maybe you even jump in there and get to a bidding war and you know get that price up. Again, my daughter's going to college, that education isn't cheap, I gotta sell this piece. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. I'm gonna post there and update everything on the eBay sale and how all that goes. And I do a lot of stuff that kind of shows you everything in between the builds. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do so. I've got a lot of really cool projects coming out. Let me know what you think of this project down in the comments below. And thanks for checking this one out. And I'll see you back here next time.